Go that was a baby. That was a baby with its own. Listen, you that's might not like this. No, that was a baby. A Let me tell you something. What you ended was a unique genetic code that had eye color, hair color, how tall it would be, how much it would weigh, its personality, proclivity toward mental illness, what kind of hair pattern to male pattern baldness. When you, when you had that abortion performed, you eliminated all of that. That's a scientific fact. Time for the latest installment of Change My Mind, where we rationalize our positions on controversial issues. Now, given the recent news, we decided to revisit abortion, and this go around, a lot of notable interactions took place. Quick question for all the women. Of all of those women that have their hands raised, which one of you would rather be forced to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term? I would. I would. So it's like once they get pregnant, then it's just like, like damn, like now my that's like, I'm not chilling right now. So like they gotta like. I, I could take hunk. a culture of your skin cells off. Yeah. And I could be like, oh, that's a human because that's a culture of growing cells. Nope. See, like right here, the baby's not ready to go out to the world and like chill, you know? Like they're not ready you, to go out. To are you? The, are you? Are you? Are you for real with this? The baby's not ready to go out and chill. I'm gonna guess you're two years in college right now. Oh, that's a good guess. Effectively. It is a parasitic relationship between a fetus and a woman. Yeah? You studying philosophy? Actually, yeah. Okay, there you go. I'm here to shut down your bull As per usual, comment below your opinions uh, on abortion in the current laws, along with which topics you'd want to see most discussed for future installments. Of course, if you want to keep these coming and ensure that long-form conversation like these continue, uh, join Mug Club at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. And we'll actually have another installment with multiple conversations uploaded soon, but I wanted to give one particular interview its own attention in this episode because of all the Change My Mind segments we've conducted, this one became the most intensely personal. Hi, how are you? Meet Yara. I'm, I'm really trying not to. People were hyping my nerves in there. So. Oh, really? What's your name? Yara. Yara Steven, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, Yara. Um, so and you just before this, I just want to say no personal offense to either one of us. Like, I appreciate I that. Your Thank you very much. So. Thank you very much. And I know you just said you have to calm yourself down because people are hyping your nerves. I, I do. I need okay. to calm down for a second. Okay. Yeah. What do you need? You were hoping there was some. Water. Uh, you know, it's, it's the legality of we can't necessarily give people water because You're then they fine. go, I got salmonella, <laughs> and then they point to me. You know, yeah, now with the that's YouTube fine. channel. Um, <laughs> so it seems like you're upset. Obviously, this the sign is pretty clear. I'm pro-life. You've been listening to some conversations. If you disagree with my position, you're welcome to, to change my mind. Um, but you still need to calm your nerves. What are you What are you so upset about? One thing that definitely really strikes a chord with me is the fact that a majority of women who have actually had to face the choice of abortion it is because it was either necessary, it was medically necessary or it was just a decision that really was the fork in the road of your future. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, a majority of men, I understand they pay child support. I understand that a man is half what it takes to create a child. Sure. But when you are by yourself and you are alone and it is dark and you have to face, do I lose my future? Like. Do I throw away my education? Mm -hmm. I can go back. Yeah, you always say I can go back, but that's twice as hard raising a child by yourself. Um, I watched my mom as a single mother, and I don't want that life for myself. And abortion itself, it's a right. I understand the legalities behind late abortion, and I do not support it unless it is medically necessary. Okay in the terms of it would kill the mother, the fetus is no longer can, can viable. I, can I pause you real quick? Yes. You've gone to a few different things. Yes. Um, first off, I uh, appreciate you being so forthcoming with your personal story. You didn't have to do that, so I do appreciate I that. I understand a lot of people are not willing to talk about it. Well, thank you very much. Um, as far as yourself, if you don't want to be a single mother, go through that life, don't have sex, uh, use contraception. See, I'm not against choice. I believe there are four choices. Mm -hmm. Abstinence, contraception, motherhood, adoption. I'm just against the, hold on one second, I'm just against the one that involves killing another human being. And I think it's very important here to go back to the very first thing that you said, which was most abortions are medically necessary, or, and then you said, or it's a fork in the road in determining your future. Conflating those 
I, I think is pivotal because most abortions performed are not medically necessary. You're right with the second half. Most are performed because the mother at that point doesn't want to deal with the consequences of her previous actions. Can, um, I, can I pause you right there real quick? Sure Going back to the four choices that you just said, mm -hmm. abstinence, which right now let's realistically look at the rates of teen sexual activity, that's not happening. It's and especially, choice, no, hold on. In this state, we do not recognize sex education for what it is. We decide to teach abstinence instead of safe sex, and that's been proven to not work. Yeah. Contraceptives. Birth control is a hormone. It will, it will change my hormone balance. It mm -hmm. physically changes my body. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it can do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. There are some women who can't take it, who can't handle it. Mm -hmm. And yes, I understand there's adoption as well. well. While we're dealing, by the way, with, with uh, abstinence, it is a choice. Um, I was abstinent until I got married. You're uh, a very rare few. Well, I'm Congratulations. Very rare. Well, just, just because it's rare doesn't mean that it's not a decision. Well, Let me finish. Just because it's rare doesn't mean that it's not a decision. Contraception isn't only... Hold on one second. Contraception doesn't involve only hormonal birth control. It also involves a 50 cent rubber that you could get at a truck stop. Uh, that then rubber is not 100 percent. You're right. It's not 100 percent. And every time you engage in sexual intercourse, you know that you are engaging in an activity that could lead to a baby. And I understand that. But Correct. then there's also the fact. And then that we said motherhood adoption. You can continue with those. Well, I mean, if you want to get into adoption, let's look at the uh, let's look at the thousands of babies who are in the foster program right now. I mean, I understand not having late-term abortions unless it's medically necessary, but my whole, my whole point is p women who are pro-choice make this decision, and anybody who wants to argue on a religious basis, at the end of the day... I haven't. Not you. Not you. I'm just saying a majority, like not a majority, a portion of people who do want to make that religious oh, argument. Oh, they're not here. That's irrelevant. So let's just talk about the, the science. Well, then in that case, well, on adoption, let's go back to that. Adoption. Okay. So those children are still in the foster care program right now. Theoretically speaking, let's say abortion was completely uh, taken away. Mm -hmm. What happens with the influx of births that are going to occur? What's going to happen with the women who don't want those children, who initially didn't want that child, and yeah. do give them up for adoption? And we have a huge surplus of more children in the foster care program who then will not be adopted, just as the many thousands that are in it right now. So, can I answer that? Uh, it sounds to me, first off, like a lot of abs absolvement of responsibility. Um, but just because someone is a burden, is that is that how we place value on human life? If someone is more burdensome because they're unwanted, they are not. They have no intrinsic value. Do you want to be realistic? No, no, I want, I want to determine but what... But let's... I'm saying, like, in the sense of burdening. Yeah. We don't want to take the burden... I know it's a different topic, but it's just something similar. We don't want to take the burden of some of our mistakes on a day-to-day -day basis, but yet it's not as polar opposite as this right now. As in the sense of, like, I can't bring up other topics because then we're going to get off topic. Yeah, so we'll get off topic. I'm just going to go ahead, yeah. No, it sounds, it wanna, sounds like we're absolving women, both women and else. men, by the way. Um, I don't know if you consider yourself, oops, oh, sorry, a, a, a feminist at all, or, uh, but I certainly wouldn't let, I certainly wouldn't let men off the hook as you are right here. Listen, both women and men have a responsibility to either be abstinent, use proper contraception. It's 2018. I don't believe for a second that people are not aware of the contraception methods available to them. Uh, and then also be parents and provide a baby up, uh, uh, for adoption. Yeah. And there are plenty of services out there. It sounds to me like absolving people from a lot of responsibility. And again, none of this is okay but some if of, it's a human life. Some of those government not services a choice if it's that a human should, life. Help de like, should help deter women from wanting to have an abortion are not as easily acceptable as everybody thinks that they are. Just because you make a certain amount of money per year means that you don't qualify for the government aid, the health care programs that are available. You don't, I don't qualify for them. I slip through the cracks mm -hmm. because I am right in the middle. So because I had nobody to help me, and yes, I can be an, another, another person on government subsidies, as well as my child. But do you really want to pay do, for do you those have a child? subsidies? I don't have a child. I'm okay. saying theoretically. Okay. Do you want to pay for my subsidies that I need requiring, I would be requiring from the government? No, of course not. You don't. 
No? No. Okay, and I know so where this is going now. We're going to go and say, well, you're not really pro-life unless you support insert socialized program here. Not necessary. And John says I'm pretty consistent across the board. I'm pro-life, meaning you cannot kill another human being inside the womb or outside of the womb. So I think the pivotal question becomes you talk about the choice, the choice, the choice. Now we provided four choices. You just believe that it's you choice. believe it's a human right to provide a fifth choice. So in that case, um, it's it, I think it's very important for you to I guess explain to me why that's not a human life. That's not necessarily something that you can explain according to biology. Sure it is. Technically, you can say that it is a human life, but I'm not tech I'm not going to get into that conversation because you can tail dog me all day long on it. No, but I think it, well, hold on a second, hold on a second. Doesn't that matter? Doesn't it, the isn't sense, the most important question if you are potentially killing is, a human when being? When do you believe that the start? Like, when do you believe that the point well, of well, life? Well, let me continue on. I, I will answer that question, but let me continue on this 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 logic trail here. If you are advocating for abortion, and we both acknowledge that it could be potentially ending a human life, isn't it important for you to be able to Why prove that it it's okay not? Why is it okay to end human life only when the government says that we can? It's not okay to yeah, end human is. life against against one's will. Do you know what will. the army does every day? Well, listen, you know we're talking about wars. We're talking about, we're talking about wars, and we're talking about self-defense. Millions, killing of an innocent die. child, killing innocent an innocent children. child. Do you? Are you, okay? Let me ask you this. You approve of that? No, I don't approve. Okay, so then you wouldn't approve of it happening in a womb, correct? I don't approve so, of you saying that a child in a womb is going to be the de facto of what happens in my life because if I decide to be if I'm I don't appreciate I don't appreciate turn. a person killing another human being so it does I get that you say I don't want listen I don't want you to have a say in my life but I don't I don't want to have a say in your life I only you want to have a say in that life. the legalities of the laws that I live the laws that affect me and the millions of other women that have to have the abortion because let me tell you right now half a lot of a lot of ha like have to have half have to have the abortion. So you only support abortion if it's medically necessary? No, I didn't say that. Well, then what you're, do you mean by have you're to have? You're putting words in my mouth. Okay, so then what do you mean have to have the abortion then? As in, it's a choice. If, if I don't have the abortion, then I have well, no. to quit school. I have to choice, go back home. If it's a choice, you don't have home. to have it. I have to. Have to implies there's no choice. I don't, you, there is no choice. Whenever it comes to sitting there and weighing your options and actually having to carry to term and deal with the already extreme changes that happen in your body sure. like until you have physically carried something in you until you have had to face the decision i'm not saying it's something that's beautiful i'm not saying that people are out here having tea parties and getting an abortion afterwards no it's not pretty well, some and people you know are what? they were doing the shout your it's, abortion campaign it's the uh, it's the really ugly truth of what we had to do what we had to do there's plenty of other men in history who will say those same words we had to do what we had to do whether it be pretty or not i can understand the moral obligations that you feel no not feel and will that you we all have a moral have, no we all have a moral obligation to not kill other people against their will period that's if they not don't an opinion. have a will because they don't have a thought process they haven't learned they haven't they haven't been bored and you know what about a two-month-old baby what about a four-month-old four -month baby they've until never learned that anything at that point they have a thought yes, process actually learning what about a person in a coma out of the what womb? about someone who's but born brain dead those those who say that if like the law says that a fetus is not a baby until it is viable outside of the womb okay those, those same laws and regulations that still constitute someone to be charged with murder or even well, manslaughter if there was an accident. There's a difference between those what's should be law changed. and what's moral. Something can be legal and entirely immoral. Okay, and? There's, so, so in the that, sense well, that, well, of, who does saying, it benefit, though? Well, who is it benefiting? Well, okay, a good example would be, let's say, slave owners. It was legal at one point, and it benefited slave owners, right? They could control so is, the body. Can I finish? They benefit? could control the bodies of other human beings. Uh, abortion. abortion only benefits the people who are killing other lives, often out of convenience. It certainly is harmful to the baby inside of the womb. Often so I do think it's very important here uh, for you to define what constitutes a human life. Why is that baby, let's say, in the womb? Says, it seems for you, your definition is viability. What constitutes a human life? When is it okay? When the child is viable outside of the womb, and that does not happen. Okay, when's that? Until about five to six months. 
okay. a pregnancy. So and we, we've already talked about late-term abortions occur in the third trimester. I believe if you've had that baby for six months, have the damn baby. So you're against late-term abortions? Yes. If okay. it's, if it's in, you know, women who do have late-term abortions, they're not out here walking around at eight months pregnant saying, ah, oh, you know what? I don't feel like having this baby anymore. Let's just get rid of it. Sure they are. No, they're not. That's almost all late-term abortions. Mm. There's late a majority there, there, that are medically induced and necessary. No, not a majority. Well, whatever ones As a matter of fact, not, nearly never, nearly never is a late-term abortion. Then those are not necessary. what I support. Okay, so you would be against late-term abortions. If it's not medically necessary, yes. Sure, okay. So you would be against most late-term abortions. If they're not medically necessary, yes. Okay, so you under, are you aware of the, uh, the Born Alive uh, Survived Abortion Infant Protection Act that just was uh, presented and uh, all major Democratic presidential candidates voted against? What are you talking about? So here, let me present you this bill, because it sounds like we might find some, some common ground here. Um, this is a bill proposed for babies who survive abortions. In uh, terms, what term were they aborted? At what point? Well, no, this is about all babies who survive abortions. Whether okay, it be late, but later term you or, have to ask, what point are these children surviving oh, yeah, so you can, you these can, abortions? You can read it right here. What it basically requires is that doctors simply provide the same kind of medical care to born babies from survived abortions as born babies who didn't survive attempted abortions. Every major DNC candidate voted against that protection. What would you say to that? Does I mean, that make it moral? No, that's not in the sense of like moralities when it comes to having the abortion in general. You're talking about saving a child who did actually survive. Survive an abortion, yeah. In that, in that point, yeah, you do have that common ground. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about today is the initial access of abortions and women who need them. Sure. Because You've not convinced me that women need them. Uh, certainly, they don't need them. They don't need to kill another human you being. You may not feel like they need them, but you know what? I'm prospering. I'm actually out here. I'm creating a life for myself, and I'm hoping to make a future for myself. And other women are on the same page as I am. Are you saying that you've had an abortion? Is that what you're saying? I'm not going to say that publicly. Because okay. Well, you just came out here and said I'm. Well, you just said I'm prospering. You just brought up abortion, so I'm, I'm confused as to the train so of logic. You know Why does what? that matter? Yeah, I did. Okay. You know what? I had to sit in that chair, and I had to face the facts that yes, what I was doing was something that was going to change my future, mm -hmm. and it did. Yeah. Because I was left alone. I was left to pay for everything. I did not qualify for any kind of funding or payments that people say sure. exist. And you, everybody who wants to say I would have adopted your baby, I'm sorry, but go adopt the other 4,000 that are already in foster care programs here. Yeah. And you can't tell just, me... Just because not everyone here would adopt that baby doesn't mean it's justifiably it's, killed. It doesn't mean that it was justifiably meant to force me to have a baby. No one's forcing you to have a baby. You would if you took away the law. No, you no would. one would be forcing you to have a baby. Yes. We'd simply be forbidding you from killing it. No, you would be forcing... No, you no would one's be forcing you to have a baby. You know the only what? forceable act there is the act of killing. I want to ask you how many, single, how many single women, how many single parents who are women are in poverty? Do you know the percentage? It could not be less relevant. Mm. How is that less relevant? Because, because those, because I'm going to tell you from a perspective. Well, you just of asked me, being, but then you said I'm going to tell you. Did you want to ask me? Yeah. Okay. Do you know the it percentage? It could not be less relevant because you're not justified in killing somebody based on poverty, income, race, sex, gender, period. It's never justified. That's that's hilarious because a lot of our politicians have justifiably killed other people for less. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I don't. Well, okay. I I can't speak for all politicians, but. To go to your argument, I don't believe you're justified in killing someone because of a lower income level. Mm, I feel like I'm justified in saving myself from having to be forced into that lower income level just because I don't have the accesses of other women who are able to sure. what, have a husband to support them, have the ability to pay the $15,000 plus dollars in medical bills. Because like that I said, it's hard occur. to go back. It's hard to go back when you have a baby. Like you talk about going back to school, it's really hard to go uh, back. Yeah, it's hard to get educated. It's hard to even support yourself. It's hard to breathe right now as it is. It's hard you to go back in time and unring that bell. single person. Yeah. That baby doesn't get to go back. That baby was never alive yeah, it because was. it wasn't viable until yeah, it it's was. outside of the womb. And we want to go that back to baby. technicalities. That was a baby with its own. Listen, you might not like it. No, that was a baby. Let me tell you something. What you ended was a unique genetic code that had eye color, hair color how tall it would be, how much it would weigh, its personality, proclivity toward mental illness, what kind of hair pattern to male pattern baldness. When you, when you had that abortion performed, you eliminated all of that. That's a scientific fact. 
The fact is, is that it was a choice and it was something that had to be done because regardless of if it's ugly. It was medically if it's, necessary. If, if, no, even if it's okay. not, especially when it's only six weeks and you know, the heartbeat law, you're familiar, correct? Sure. With the heartbeat law. Yeah, do it's you not support really consistent. It? It's not really consistent across the board, though. As we see in Texas, you can have abortions up to 20 weeks. No, I, I believe that life begins at conception. You believe that life begins at conception. Yeah. See, I believe that life begins when the child is, is viable okay. outside of the womb within the third trimester. So you just said viable, but you pointed to 10 weeks. I didn't technically point at something. You're just trying to get very technical. I just was. Well, no, I think it's important. Where is a baby viable? Broad aspect. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a scientist so I'm not going to say that on record and sit here and make myself look ignorant whenever you're probably ready me, prepared with the facts well, let me I don't ask, have I wasn't prepared for this I came I out I appreciate it let me ask you this this is an important question a human being alive today are they worth more than a human being alive 200 years ago I don't know are they I don't believe so I'm asking you you don't believe so? No, I don't believe their life is worth more than a human being born 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Okay. I believe Why? that human life is intrinsically valuable. Intrinsically okay? valuable at yes, any stage life. and point, yes. correct? And right now, well, right now we're talking about two 25-year-olds. Mm -hmm. A human being, 25 years old in 2018, mm -hmm. 25 years old in the year 1918. Mm -hmm. Would we agree? Mm -hmm. Would you place more value on one person in a certain point in time than the other person? Okay, let's go a step further. I don't believe that a wealthy white male uh, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, I don't believe that his life is worth any more than a poor black females in Louisiana. Would we agree? Obviously you agree, but you know what? The way that the laws yeah, are set agree? up, I would agree, but the Okay, well this is important. No, you're using, you're using a theory because technically look no, no, at I'm the laws and look right at how, how it works and the way our judicial system works. The Manhattan man does actually have more value because he has more money in his pocket. Well, uh, he does he according to you. Out. He does according to you. No, according to the laws. No, according to you, and here's no, it's why. it's because he can pay that the bail point bond bringing, the to point, get out, and he point, can pay for whatever he wants. I, I know you said that you're not prepared, and so you don't want me to, uh, to present the facts, but you're going to have to allow me to do so at some point. It's not necessarily I don't want you to present the facts. It's the fact that I want you to recognize that there are other people that do actually have an opposing opinion other than yours that don't believe that life does begin at conception. That's, that's why I'm here. I recognize your opinion. I recognize you have an opinion, and I recognize you have a right to an opinion. I believe it's wrong. I believe you're wrong. That's fine. So let me present my opinion so you fully understand it. You use viability as a measurement for a human being. <laughs> there are a lot of parameters there that could change it. Now, the reason I bring up someone in the Upper East Side versus a poor person in Louisiana is with the modern innovations in, in technology and science, particularly medical innovations, you can have a baby that's completely viable in Manhattan, and that exact same baby, that exact same uh, length along in the pregnancy is not viable in, let's say, the hills of West Virginia or in Louisiana because they don't have access to the same medical care. Is one baby a life and one isn't? I don't understand what you're saying. If a baby survives because it's born in Lenox Hill in Manhattan at 21 weeks, mm -hmm. and that same baby dies in Louisiana, one is a life, one is a human life, and one's not. I don't understand that you're. Pr well, are you saying you're I'm trying saying to viability link? Viability is not standard. You're trying to link viability to worth. No, you just said that viability is what determines human life. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that's not consistent. So, does that mean that a human life, the value of a life, is different in New York, in the city, but than you're in, let's say, about Louisiana? about geographic location. I'm talking about Yes, because about that determines time. viability. No, time determines viability. No, what I'm saying is the exact same time. A baby, let's say 22 weeks along in New York, in the greatest hospital in the country, that same baby 22 weeks along in uh, the bayou in Louisiana. One lives at 22 weeks, one doesn't because of modern medical care. One is viable, one is not. You believe that that's a consistent measurement of the value of human life? I mean, is it viable? Viability is the determination on if it's alive, so then no. It's not. So it's not viable. If it dies at 22 weeks in one location, whether it doesn't matter, it's geographical location. So, you're, so, so in your view, people who come from a privileged upper class with better access to medical care are worth more as human beings, certainly in, in utero. That's the way our system is set up, and I think it should be changed. You you just you know shrunk away, but that's the truth. Yeah. I'm sorry, but the person who can afford the well, medical the bills is, is and the person who can afford... Everywhere. 
The only difference here is there's one of us saying, if you're doing a talk about changing the system, I'm saying we need a system that recognizes human life, both in Louisiana, the well, hills of West Virginia, Why don't you face the fact of why are the, why, ask yeah. yourself, why are these women feeling as though they need one? Why do these women feel as though they can't take care of a baby? Because I can tell you right now, if I had the perfect job, the perfect husband, the perfect life, I definitely would have had a baby. Well, I tell you what, but I certainly don't have any of those things, but I wouldn't feel justified in killing another human being. Well, there you have it. What do you think? Let me know below. Are you pro-life, pro-choice? Is it determined by socioeconomic status, ethnic minority status, where life begins? Let me know. And stay tuned for part two of this edition of I'm Pro-Life, Change My Mind. Hey there, if you like this video, this is the part where I would usually tell you to subscribe, but... I can't do it anymore. I'm gonna tell you to subscribe, and then YouTube is going to decide that we can't reach you even though you subscribe to this channel, and then I'll say hit the notification bell, and then the notification bell won't even be there anymore. I don't know what to say. More than likely, you'll find my face in a milk carton. But do what you can to stop it. It's just, it's just, it probably won't do much.